glad to be before you on this Wednesday evening. Certainly thankful for each and every one of being here this night. If you were to be asked which sin is the most dangerous, what would you answer? Would you say adultery or fornication? What about lying? Murder or hatred? What about slander or backbiting? I think we all would agree that each of these sins are indeed dangerous, both for the offender as well as the victim. However, there is a behavior that is overlooked as being the most dangerous. This behavior in question is neglect. The Bible has much to say about neglect. We see in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14 that Paul warned the young preacher Timothy, neglect not the gift that is in thee. So you see that Timothy had the ability not only to use the gift that he was given, but also more scarily to neglect it, to fail to use it, to choose not to use it. This man had a miraculous gift bestowed upon him by the laying on of apostles' hands, yet it was not an automatic thing. He had the ability to choose to use that gift. And he had the ability to choose not to use it. <clears throat> we find a similar warning in James chapter 4 verse 17. There it says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Well, what is good? Of course, that's what the Bible would define as good. So if I, as a member of the body of Christ, a Christian, choose not to do what is God's will, I sin. If I ne neglect to obey God in a given situation, I sin. Let us first consider, or consider... Our first point, why neglect is dangerous, because neglect is deceptive. Neglect is dangerous because it is deceptive. It is easy for, un, for one to see just how ugly, how evil, and even how threatening many sins are and can be, such as those we've discussed earlier. Adultery, drunkenness, murder. You can see the relationships being destroyed through really any of these three, these examples. With adultery, you would have trust being broken and destroyed between two spouses. And in oftentimes, that relationship cannot be repaired. Drunkenness can destroy families. Obviously, it destroys one's body especially the liver and mind and brain and even murder we can see the results of that you've just taken one's life and that life can never be restored in this in the flesh however when we consider neglect the sins of omission are easily overlooked after all you can't see what you don't do but consider James chapter 1, verse 27. He writes there that pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself spotted or unspotted from the world. James mentions some things that a Christians are to do in, in order to be faithful. How are we in our reading and with God's Word? How we are in our studying? Do we study God's Word? Do we hunger and thirst after it? 
Here in America, we do not have any issues finding food. If you get hungry on your lunch break at work, or if you decide to have a second breakfast, or whatever the case may be, there's always a Whataburger on the corner. If anything, there's a convenience store down the street. Go pick up a couple snacks. We're always around some form of food. But do we look at God's word in the same way? Do we feast upon it as often as we need to? 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 and 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17. This is an area that often gets neglected. Now we must realize that it is a good thing to abstain from sin. However, it is not good enough. In Matthew chapter 25, verses 41 through 46, Jesus, our Lord, gives a glimpse of the judgment scene. There he says, Then shall he also say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw thee an hungered? or thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, it did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. We see from this passage that Inaction will not bring us heaven. There is no reason for us to expect by doing nothing, heaven will be ours. Even by simply abstaining from sin, there are still things to do. While we must abstain from sin, there are still many different commands of God's word that we must follow in order to be faithful to him. So we see that neglect is deceptive because we get a sense of security an accomplishment simply by not committing sin. Secondly, neglect is dangerous because it requires no effort. From the different sins that we've referenced earlier, such as murder, lying, and stealing, one must do something in order to commit these sins. One must act. Neglect, by definition, requires no action at all. Neglect at either step in God's plan of salvation results in one being lost. Just as it took me three steps to get to this stage, if I had not taken those steps, I would not be on this stage. We see in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, that failure to be to believe the gospel and be baptized does not result in a Christian. Then we see in Acts chapter 2 verse 38 failure to repent and be baptized again does not result in a Christian. Both have one thing in common. They require no effort. I can choose not to repent. I can choose not to confess. I can choose not to be baptized. And each one of those required no effort on my part. In Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8, we see the prophet of old saying, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Can you imagine if Isaiah had neglected the Lord's call? 
perfect example of Saturday. We have a work day. The call for workers for the church here at Spring has been made. Here am I, send me. There's things around this grounds that need to be taken care of. Can we rely on the members to be here to help in that workload? We're going to find out on Saturday at 9 o'clock. Going back to Isaiah, that prophet could have indeed ignored the call, and it would have required zero effort on his part. But in so doing, he would have been of no use to God and his plan. Third, we see that neglect is dangerous because it is the root of other sins. If you have anything to do with plants, gardening, even a terranium, this principle is very easy to note. In Proverbs chapter 24, verses 30 through 34, we find, I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. He had a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that tra or traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. When a vineyard is neglected or a garden, it will eventually be overtaken by weeds. If you've done anything with soil, planting any kind of crop, you understand this principle. It takes work to produce fruit. Growing up, we had all sorts of vegetables. We had, you know, corn, green beans, and black-eyed peas. And as the kids, it was our job to go pull weeds. Of course, if we didn't, there were consequences, one of which we didn't get to eat the fruit that was made from those plants. We had a job to do, pull those weeds, keep this garden in order. When one becomes idle or neglectful, the weeds of life will soon overtake them. We know from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 that the Christian is created in Christ to perform good works. There it reads, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Part of the Christian's growth process involves working out our own salvation. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. And we're to do that with fear and trembling. Without working in the garden, no long-term fruit will ever be produced. You might have some squash show up, but it's not going to be as pretty and as good tasting as if you attended that garden correctly. And you might only get one squash rather than several from the different patches you planted. Without working that which is good, there is only one alternative, and that is works of evil. Fourth and final, we consider that neglect is so dangerous because it will cause one to be lost. This should be of utmost importance to each and every one of us. Not only to the Christian, but to those of the world. We know that the one talent man was lost. Not because of what he did. He was, not, he was lost because of what he neglected to do. Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 through 30. You can read about that account in that passage. He was so slothful that when his master came to retrieve what was rightfully his, he said, go get your money. It's in the ground. I buried it. 
Aren't I a good servant? Due to his neglect, this servant was labeled as unprofitable and was thus cast into outer darkness. Verse 30 of that passage. The, true, the, the same can and will be stated today about us if we choose to neglect the call of our master, that is, Jesus the Christ. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? You see, if one chooses to neglect their own salvation, they ultimately will be robbed of it. There is no one else to blame for such a tragedy. The individual must, in humble obedience, come to Christ, follow his plan for salvation. But it is that individual who must also maintain their salvation from the standpoint of being obedient. The same is true of the alien sinner who has never obeyed the gospel of Christ. You have that choice. As moral, free, or free moral agents, we have that right to not obey God's word. However, we do not have the right to escape the consequences of our actions. And that is eternal damnation in hell. The choice is ours. We can choose to neglect salvation or we can choose to obtain salvation. This evening we have considered neglect and we have noted that it is the most dangerous sin because it is deceptive. It takes no visible form, if you will. It's easy to overlook. It's easy to pat ourselves on the back when we're doing things, or not doing things, rather, when we choose to abstain from that which God has called sin. But are we doing what we must? We have considered that it's so dangerous because it takes little or no effort. It's easy to do. It's easy to neglect. It's easy not to obey God's will when there's no visible effect that it has. We've considered it dangerous because it leads to other sins. It's the foundation for other wrongdoings. And we've noted that it is dangerous because ultimately and eventually it brings about our spiritual death. Let us be mindful of the warnings given to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Most of the world thinks they're all right thinks they're perfectly fine in God's eyes. After all, I don't do thus and so. Have you obeyed the gospel of Christ? If you've not done that, you're lost. To the Christian, it's easy to, to rest on our laurels. Look at the amount of good that I've done throughout my lifetime. And then kind of retire as if it was. Take heed lest ye fall. And secondly, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? He's in each and every one of us by His Word. It's not some magical thing that occurs when the Holy Spirit zaps you. That doesn't happen. We've got to know the book. We've got to allow it to occupy our minds. So as a child of God, have you allowed a sin of neglect, or for that matter, any other sin back into your life? If so, make it right before your Creator this evening. Or as an alien sinner, one who has never obeyed the gospel of Christ, why not take the next few moments to obey the gospel, to put Him on in baptism, 
and become a child of God. Live faithfully, and heaven will be yours when this life in the flesh is over. Whichever of these needs is yours, please make it known as together we stand and sing.